right, going up, maybe. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to get It is the Monday, but uh, well, no, not the old name. We're not allowed to say that anymore. Uh, the Monday Mayhem Wrap Up. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, with my compatriot. He is back. He is off of his uh, vacation spots. He is here. He is with his Legos, and he's with us talking Monday Night Raw. Is mad, Mike? Um, it, Sorg, isn't it crazy that you and I both got drafted to the same podcast? Yeah, I know, right? I mean, it, it's... let's check in with the war room. Yeah, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. Okay, just because the war room is uh, Ponder's cats and dog that were uh, uh, really. I have a different reactions. war room here. Oh yeah, I have a different war room here. Okay. Just make everything the same on different nights. Oh, jeez. I've hated this because it just doesn't matter because nobody was coming from anything because everybody was everywhere. Exactly. The, the only thing I was excited to see is the people who were taken from 205 Live. <laughs> yeah. Of, of and who the will things. be fodder for the 24-7 title. There you go. So congratulations on your future Three twenty four seven title wins, Umberto Correa. Ah, looking forward to it. Uh, so, yeah. anyways, here we are. It is Monday. Uh, I want to, you know, uh, so I there, there was actually some bad this weekend. There was well, personally, there was some bad, but uh, there is there was some bad at a <laughs> wrestling show that I think turned into good, sir. Um, okay. So follow me. Rise with a Y. They had their show on uh, Saturday night, and unfortunately, there was some. Uh, um, not great people in the crowd. Uh, oh, some bad apples. There's some bad apples in the crowd. I think I, I shared with you uh, uh, the post in response to it. Um, so, so ended up they and I heard at least once. I hear it hap- heard it happen a couple of times. Uh, some certain derogatory um, um, comments towards certain uh, lifestyle choices being used uh, that were oh, unsettling. Boy. And uh, and if, and the last straw was apparently they had tripped the wrestler. Um, in the middle of the match as they were going up the aisle to do something. Um, and, you know, it's stated. You've been to an indie show, Mike. I understand. Yeah, I, I have, yeah. And, you know, at the beginning they say, you know, you cannot touch the wrestlers. You'll be ejected, right? Mm-hmm. And this is not the first instance where this person has, has tripped a wrestler. So, like, this is an ongoing thing. Um, but in in – in response to it, as with anything shitty that happens with this promotion, like positivity comes out of it. Uh, again, you know, they made that statement that we talked about over on Rise Wrestling's page, and which talked about their standards. And I think they they're very because I, I know the wrestlers have gotten out of hand here and there in in the promotion like that, you know, and um, you know it's been dealt with. And I think that that kind of they, it's one group that is just very good with atmosphere, right? And uh, I know you read a little bit of that uh, um, uh, policy, I guess, Mike. What did you think? Yeah. Um, like, it's it's a good policy to have. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's something that shouldn't have to be written down. It's a terrible shame that it does have to be written down. Yeah. But I'm glad that they're being proactive with it. Mm-hmm. And honestly, people who violate that policy can... Uh, stay in the Firefly Funhouse as it burns to the ground. <laughs> Jeez, that's a good transition for the rest of Raw tonight. I don't. It just yeah. Uh, I mean, and I've been at other shows where it's like, okay, this is getting uncomfortable, you know. And like, then, uh, nothing... just be a decent person. Yeah. Just yeah. It it takes no energy to be a decent person. And guess what? Uh, People are not going to live the same way you do. They are not going to have the same um, uh, sexual preference. The same gender identity they're not going to have the same anything that you are Mm -hmm. so it doesn't fucking matter to you and just let people live their lives and we can tell by the facebook comments of the the accused here of exactly where they land on that uh throwing oh i you don't even i i literally do not know who this person is Mm -hmm. but if you showed me a lineup of five people i guarantee i'd be able to pick him out (laughs) 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, no, just uh, you want to give a shout out to those guys for handling an awkward situation uh, over there at Rise. Uh, and again, it's one of the, you know, uh, I, I think they're just really good about, you know, them and others are, are really good about, you know, between the people they have in their locker room and how they run mm-hmm. their shows and how they present their shows are really good about, you know, from the ground up, making sure that's important, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, where other promotions are are more worried about what's going out there and and not really working about the background culture. You know, it's just like it's just like all those business self help things, Mike, that you see on the internet. It's all about company culture. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> and it's the top down. It's all about corporate synergy, sort. Absolutely, corporate inter indie wrestling synergy, right? Mm-hmm. Anyways, but uh, that's in the works here. And if you don't follow that, Bailey will talk to your manager. (laughs) Yes, Bailey will talk to your manager. With with a makeshift makeshift battle axe. (laughs) What? (laughs) Is that what was that that took out the uh, the, the Flaily Two Barm guys? I, um... It was a stick with a knife on it, I think. It was a stick with a knife on it. It was, it really was. It was just... Whatever it was, I was down with it. It was um, really but, cool, but it was just like, what is that that she's holding? Sorg, we have some breaking news in the chat room. What's going on? We have breaking, breaking news is from it? Matt Carlin, our, yes. our friend in the mainstream media. Ah, oh, let us know all the important hot news and hot takes. Yes, the hot, hot news. Apparently, there's a hot angle on House Hunters. Mary and Jim can't find a house they both like within their $450,000 budget. Son of a bitch! You know what? Mary and Jim, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> That's what I say. That's what I say. There you Suck go. it up and deal. You're together. Figure it out. And that's and Figure that's... it out, Mary and Jim. And that's our policy here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, figure... figure that shit out. Speaking of burning it down... Um... <laughs> Oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, Why, um, Sork, I know we don't like to talk about Halloween Panic. WWE, you Saudi be killing me. Um, ooh, man, why, why aren't you in that marketing department? Oh, oh, God, because I would get fired immediately. Um, can we not... Build a match on the basis of burning down a house for that <laughs> show, or 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 based on fire when we're going to the desert. Yeah, can we not do that? Um, I mean it's it's just it's just par for the course for WWE. I can't get no Saudi's faction. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. And and I think they announced randomly that Ricochet was joining Team Hogan. Wait, did, did, did they? I, I thought was he was so, on the graphic. Maybe he was. I don't know. No, because the other ones were... I don't know. I can't. It's There's people and things and random and okay. Uh, I don't know. And Matt Carlin's is giving us a follow up on uh, on the house hunter situation. Oh, good. He says, "Who drives all the way to Lamont Furnace just to be an asshole?" Now, Lamont Furnace is that the tag team that was from the mid nineties? No, no, he's Where, talking that, re- that wrestled in ECW and then WWE. The, he's and and tried for the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Tag Team Championships. He's right. Re- he's referring to the Rise story. Oh, that's where that event is held. No, but my question still stands. Okay, okay, we'll go with Lamont that. Lamont Furnace, that, that's the tag team from the mid-90s, who's, right? Who's Lamont, and why is he burning it down? Don't, don't you remember Furnace and LaFon? Oh, no. Doug Furnace, Phil LaFon, no? All right, no, fine. No. Uh, someone watching or listening <sighs> got that head. joke okay. and really appreciated it. I'm sure they are and on our... If you did, please email us. Mike, I got that joke at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The email lines are open. We did double check them. Let us know mm-hmm. that that's going through. Yes. Uh, anyways, on any, and I know we're on multiple platforms tonight, including Vimeo for the first time, Mike. Ooh, Vimeo. Mm-hmm. Look at us being fancy. It's a, mm. 
You should see the Vimeo bill. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, no, no, yeah, we we're uh, kind of moving things around, shifting things around to make sure we're good when Facebook. Just like the drafts. Oh, let's see what Facebook drops. They hammer at the end of the month on unsecured uh, RTMPs. Um, M- RTM, RTPMs, R- whatever that is. R2D2s. Yeah. R2D2s, yes. R2D2s. Hey, it, and I know, and I know you're going to say this is a side effect of what's going on um, uh, at the end of this month, but man, the women are getting featured, and the women are consistently the better parts of Raw. To be fair, the women have been the better parts of Raw for a while now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, women's match awesome, women's match awesome, bunch of dudes being stuff and being manly. Yeah, but uh, you know what wasn't awesome in, in the world of women's wrestling, Sorg? Hmm. No one in that in either war room, none of them are iconic. No. What the shit? What? My girls were not drafted? That is a crime? Someone drafted Jinder Mahal over the Iconics. I don't know whose draft board you're on, but I want you in my fantasy league so I can fucking crush you. I'm blaming the robot on the one side and the guy in the Ultimate Warrior face paint on, face paint on the USA Network side. Yes, I I accept those terms. But <sighs> so so all right, let, let's talk about this draft. In fact, let's not talk about the draft. Okay, let's talk about the dra- the people who were undrafted. Okay. Who are officially free agents. Okay. Sorg, I think Cesaro's going to NXT. Don't mind that. Sorg, I want to see Cesaro versus Walter. Please. Sorg, that may be my match for Mayhem Mania. (laughs) (laughs) It is a little different this year, isn't it? It's October. Yeah. I already have my match. To be fair. And I've said it out loud. So I don't care. I feel like you were dropping, like uh, some of us were, were dropping a, a match hints in like you know April. Well, I I was, but then that match happened a lot. So I'm like, okay, I need a new match. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but Cesaro versus Walter. Mm-hmm. Yes, and please. I, and it's been well. He didn't he beat up? No, was he a member of Imperium on the last takeover that he took on? Cesaro? Yeah, maybe no. no, it was somebody else. But he, he had like no. kind of an open challenge, and he, he you no, know. he took on uh, Ilya Dr- um, Dragunov. Okay, and it was fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, he's, he's definitely he that little man around a lot. He's definitely being very uh, yeah, he did, um, <laughs> but uh, he, he, he's definitely being very uh, European with his challenges, if you will. <laughs> I see what you did there. Hmm. Oh, so, man, but I, but again, it's just like okay, cool. What's gonna happen now? Because I feel like, like, but, you know, like when we first did these drafts, I was like, hey, SmackDown's actually doing something, and this is kind of cool, and they're giving people a shot. And Raw is kind of like, eh, okay. And, and, but there was like there was a distinction and something happening, and then we've just like muddled but, everything together that we have just five hours of the same show. And plus, if you know anything about wrestlers' personal lives. Mm-hmm. You already know half the picks that are going to happen. <laughs> yeah, like uh, oh, Charlotte's going to Raw. Guess I, what? So is her boyfriend. I swear, like five minutes after I saw Carmella was going to SmackDown officially, I saw uh, Corey and Carmella on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, because Corey's only on SmackDown now, so of course Carmella's staying there. Yeah. Honestly, the only good takeaway I have from the draft tonight is. When she's fully healed, we can have a riot squad again. What is this? Brandon? We can have a riot squad Brandon again. from Kansas City is saying that Liv Morgan is coming back and she's bringing holy water. That's fine. What is that? As she should. I'm not sure. I'm on board. <laughs> I don't. You just, you know what? You just soft sold that to us and we're on board. I am. I am all in for it. No wow. pun intended. Wow, I, I'm going to ask in the future that like random notes like that get dropped on me well, along with a YouTube. Link. I kind of hope Drake Maverick goes to NXT. Yeah, he was undrafted. Yeah, along with um, EC3. No, EC3 was drafted. He was there because the thing there was a supplemental fucking draft after SmackDown Sorg, mm-hmm. 
and EC3 got drafted to Raw, presumably because he's going to job on main event. Has anybody else found the um, the network partner uh, call-ins, like uh, uh, draft analysis by uh, Terry Bradshaw, just absolutely excruciating? Oh, yeah, no. The... Like, it's hard. It's it's tough. It's I, I honestly, really, I, can't, I got home really hard. Later. I just fast-forwarded through as many of those as I could. Yeah. Because they're all vague generalities and nothing is talking about anything specific. Like, if you want to get these people on, have them be on the fucking show. Mm -hmm. Like, have them actually be on the show. But it's a way... Listen, Mike, it's all about synergy across the brands. If it's about synergy, then why didn't Bart Simpson announce a fucking draft pick? Got me. You got me. I know. I know why, Sorg. And I figured this out. Does he? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's because Disney. Disney Plus just had a tweet storm today announcing everything that's going to be available at launch. I didn't even know there was a Big Hero 6 cartoon. Sorg, like, you understand Sorg, Big Hero 6 is one of my Johnny's, favorite movies. Sorg, have you ever seen Johnny Tsunami? No, but I'm still... A Sorg, that should be your first movie. I don't even know where to start, man. It's like Sorg, I'm telling you where to start. Johnny Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami. Producer Johnny Messi, take a note. Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami as soon as Disney Johnny, Plus comes in. Listen, Johnny man, Tsunami. I've prepaid for three years of Disney Plus. I'm gonna fucking get my use out Sword, of this. Sword, do you know what the second movie you're supposed you're going to watch on Disney Plus is? is? Something with Hannah Montana. No. Sorg. Do you know what it is? Frozen. I've I never, have it right I, here. I've never seen Frozen. Sorg. This is what you're watching. Rookie second. of the Year is on there? Is on Disney Plus. Is that a Fox movie? You know movie? why? It's a Fox movie. Yes. Listen, it, it, for the past like s six months, every time I see a Fox thing at the beginning of a movie that I'm watching, and I see, you know, you know, 20th Century Fox, a Disney company. Because you know <laughs> that's going to come up sooner or later on those, right? I think it's kind of funny that they changed it to 21st Century Fox and they're not going to make it to the 21st Century. <laughs> um, Mike? Because it's all going to be Disney. Mike? Yeah. This is the 21st Century. You know what I mean. I don't. They're not going to make it through the 21st century. 20, oh, through. Okay. Oh, context. Gotcha. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, let's see. No Mickey Mouse Club on Disney+. Plus. She's sad. Uh, mm. Tina, these are just launch titles. This is just stuff at launch. I have a feeling Listen, the Mickey man, Mouse Club... We didn't have the WCW the Thunders right away when the network started. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's yeah, got to be something. There's a reason. There's a reason. What? Oh, there's well, a reason. Well, there, I'm, yeah, there's a reason. But yeah, there's um, a reason. <laughs> do I have to have the uh, same? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that later. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a big Hero Six cartoon. I mm -hmm. just discovered it today. Um, Sorg, do you know what else is gonna be on there? Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Uh, I've already watched through all that. I was literally going through and trying Sorg, to figure it, out it, because it's got it Hulk's Age of Smash. Rewatch. What's that? It, de it demands a rewatch. Yes, because uh, uh, Avengers Assemble did not hold up. Um, oh. Guardians of the Galaxy. Eh. Uh, I eh, I'm go okay. I'm going to watch I'm all of the fine. other Spider Man shows. I'm curious about them because I've never. I haven't seen the 2017 one. I need to finish Spectacular Spider Man or Ultimate Spider Man. Wait, or wait, wait, it was. wait, 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 wait. Which wait, one was wait, it? Wait, wait, Hold on. wait, wait, wait. You have not finished Spectacular Spider Man. That work? was the one that was basically Ultimate Spider Man, right? It was the one that was. The best Spider Man. It was of the all one time. that was like Spider Man meets Family Guy. Not Family Guy. Who am I thinking? Yeah, yeah, Family Guy with the callbacks. No. And you'd have like a mini one or, or no? Is that a different one? No. Spider Man only the spectacular Spider Man only had Spider Man characters. It didn't have like. Yeah, Miles I'm Miles. thinking the one that had like Nova and 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 all those guys. No, no, okay, that's Ultimate Spider-Man. Listen, man, apparently there's more Spider-Man yeah, series than I, I realized. I didn't know there was a, I didn't that's know there was a new Star Wars cartoon. I mean, I'm only partway through my DVD of season one of Rebels. I got a lot to catch up on. We both do, Sword. Yes. I'm watching Star Trek Discovery season one right now. I just finished Supergirl, and now all the CW stars are starting again, so I need to start watching them again. I, I started watching Black Lightning. Uh, I got a few episodes of that. I'm halfway through Agents of Shield last season. Uh, I'm still got to do the last season and a half of Gotham. I mean, I've, I've been watching Titans. Titans. Titans I've been hearing good things about that. Ro Cameraman Ross been telling me about that. Org, I, you know me, I love my Titans. Mm -hmm. I was skeptical. Mm -hmm. 
It's a lot of fun. There's a lot to be skeptical about. By the way, shout out to uh, a friend of the show that's, uh, I believe, going to be on uh, scheduled to join us tomorrow night, uh, Xander Gabriel, out there in the chat room tonight. So Excellent. what's up? What's up, Xander? Looking, uh, looking forward to see you guys here in studio. Um, so, yeah, again, and John's, yeah, again, also surprised there's a big Hero 6 cartoon. Listen, so I want to catch up on all the stuff that's been on, like, Disney and Disney XT that's been, mm-hmm. like, rather yeah. unaccessible I, to me. I not the mention, about- not the mention, and you know what got me on this train was freaking Johnny Gargano, because I saw a tweet, strangely, as I was listening to the Gregory Iron interview of Johnny Gargano on his podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it was really weird and, 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 and meta. Oh, like Gargan Overload? Gargan Overload. Oh, yeah. Um, by the way, you know, I know they're like, like best friends, but is like, I feel like Gregor Iron interviewing Gargano is like me interviewing Gargano. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it was strangely, it's like, okay, you know, it, anyways, about that. Um, but, uh, the Disney Mayhem show, maybe, maybe. Uh, oh God, I wish it'd be much better than talking about Raw. Hey, you know what? You know what's much better than talking about Raw? We had a little bit, man, Mike. I didn't know if you noticed we had a little bit of a Mayhem Show uh, reunion this weekend. I I uh, I heard tell of this. Yes. I heard tell. So saw, it uh, was – we'll talk – because this is the show where we don't give a fuck. So, uh, it Mowage! Was, yeah, <laughs> it was the wedding of Lunchbox. And some of you may may not have been listening long enough to know that there was a Lunchbox. But he is the the one I started the show with. Mm-hmm. All those years ago, yeah, and he, he has gotten he was, he married. Was the first person that talked about Lita's boobs with sword. That's right, he is, and uh, <laughs> we say with affection. Um, of course, absolutely. But now, not only was he there, one um, uh, dynamite Don Papuga was there. Oh my, oh, sword, sword! Hold on. By the way, you I never to, called her dynamite yeah, Don Papuga. Ha- I just you have with that to put right some now. respect on that name. Hmm. You gotta say Papu. Oh, have, it's been a really, while. It's been a while. You have to elongate. Um, as well as, uh, of course, Larry and Dutters were there, and and producer Missy, and uh, but also the Riz. Oh, ooh, Riz That's and cool. Bobby F J Town. Bobby got in his car. He did. Bobby got in his car. He did. And let me know. He he Bobby. may be able to come back to the show very very soon. Yes. He got a new job. He got a new Excellent. job. That makes him like get in a wind tunnel for money. It's weird. We're gonna ask that, him about that on the show. That just allows him to buy more pops and me to be scared. For That's him. right. I, and by the way, this other thing about like him maybe cutting promos in front of his wall of pops needs to happen. Oh yeah, because I think well, somebody's doing I, that. And you should. He should call it cheap pops with Bobby F J. Cheap pops with Bobby F J. Town. Somebody tweet that to him. I'm gonna tweet that to him. <laughs> Look forward. <laughs> Looking forward to quote cheap pops with Bobby F J Town coming soon. I'm gonna put down the mayhem account and tweet yes. it without any explanation for when he <laughs> finds that pack. All right, adding uh, to the lore. Just uh, adding to the lore. But again, it was great to to get to see everybody together again and and. I'm just like, man, how do we get this to happen more often other than Tuesday nights? So, um, I mean, I, I, I can't guarantee food for everyone, but there's going to be one of those around this time next year. <laughs> <laughs> and no, we'll have to bring planet. doggy back. To it. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you're going to have a cookie table or is that too Pittsburgh for you? Um, Sork. Sork. <laughs> Sork. We're having a churro table, sort A churro table? Holy yeah. shit. And cotton candy. Sorg. Damn it. Sorg. Come on. <laughs> this is me we're talking about here. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Let's try to bring this around. Anything else for us? Yeah. Kabuki Warriors had a nice long thing. And you know what? We did not see Natalia's um, partner coming because oh, it I made no it. sense. I saw it coming a mile away. Because process of elimination, there's only so many people it could have been. Yeah, and none of them were on Raw. I think it was a tweet or something. I were, or maybe it was Missy. It was like, is it Ronda Rousey? Oh, oh. I, I think Bobby tweeted that. I'm like, no. It's I not think it was Ronda. Bobby. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're not gonna do Ronda on a surprise <laughs> mystery the way, spot that's not even the main event. By the way, chat room is uh, 
chat room's popping at the churros. Yes, of course. Because as you do. As um, you do. No, it was uh, it was interesting. Um, I, I like Oscar's new makeup. Yes. It was it was good. Uh, solidifying the green mist. Mm-hmm. I like it. By the way, Bobby uh, got a T-shirt of. There's a really good drawing of the green mist bits. Um, um, that that he got. I'll, I'll have to see if he can share it in the group or something. Uh, Excellent. That's pretty cool. Uh, it, it was a long, I think it's from the same person that did like the bloody Becky. Becky one? Yeah. Probably. And which and then they also did a bloody Becky, but with the green mist. <laughs> I think I saw that. That's great. That is fantastic. Yes. But, uh, uh, anything but... else from Raw that we should t- I mean, there's, there's good stuff. Like, uh, we got Shelton and Ricochet. We got um, short but sweet, yeah, but it's I, the I Aleister thought... Black looking good. Uh, the friend of the show. Go, um, oh, yeah. I need a tag team partner. You need a tag team partner. Listen, tag team partner. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show lore, at one point, uh, there was a challenge laid out between Ray Rowe and Mad Mike. This is, yep. this is in the archives. This mm-hmm. happened. It's in the lore. It's in the lore. And now uh, Ray Rowe, quote quote fingers here, Eric with a K, uh, mm-hmm. is now uh, the Raw Tag Team Champion with this Hanson fellow, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, he's uh, and now uh, Mad Mike needs a partner to cash in his championship yep, because uh, all challenges made to me are still active until the time in which I cash them in. Absolutely, Absolutely. that's how challenges work, right? That's right. So, so, um, so you guys can help out, help us out. <laughs> Email Mad Mike Tag Team Partner Options at <laughs> WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. And I will accept anyone but Ty Cross. There you go. Anybody but Ty Cross. <laughs> Literally anybody but He's, Ty. Cross. He is still a Rise Tag Team like, champion, by the way. Up at FJ Town, yes. Ty Cross, no, no. no. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh-huh. Let's, mm-hmm. get you, let's, let's get you a Ziggy Heim. Oh fuck yeah! Absolutely. <laughs> Shit, Ziggy, I wouldn't have to. Li- I wouldn't have to lift a finger. That'd be great. We'll give you a Ziggy Heim and a kendo stick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. That'd be great. These are good yeah. options. These are really good options. Ziggy's for the kids. <laughs> for the effing kids. Mad Mike's Ziggy for- is for the kids. Mad Mike's for the effing kids. Yeah, I I am for the Toys R Us kids. There you go. Sorry, sorry. They started tearing down my Toys R Us. I today. saw your. Sad bitmoji. Very sad. Tweet. Very sad. I, I I teared up a little bit. Like we're we're talking about maybe going there on Black Friday, and pouring out a forty for Jeffrey. Because mm. <laughs> we all would have been working. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, don't miss that. I bet. Yeah. No. No. Not at all. I. I like. Um. I am double no, right, It just popped up. Uh. I am checking the graphic. Yes. Ricochet is on the graphic. We mm-hmm. have two more mysteries for Team Hogan and one more mystery for Team Flair. Yeah. Um. I. I saw someone tweeting about tr- Ricochet versus Cedric Alexander, and they're like, uh, Ricochet versus uh, Shelton Benjamin, and they're like, wasn't this just the plot of Looper? <laughs> Which is really funny to me on a few different levels, mainly because I would have loved to see Shelton, Shelton Benjamin um, in Lucha Underground. By the way, John Fun, who uh, I don't I, did we talk about? I, I actually met him in person at Conquest Pro last month. Oh, um, no, I think I think first time ever. Uh, he, he said he's still step in, but uh, War Machine scares the crap out of him. So that's just fine. Go. I don't need wimps on my team. That's oh. fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's okay. I, you know what? I, I don't want wimp. Just you know. Oh no, Sorg. Wise. I, said I, I would wimp. just consider I'm him already, wise. Sorg, Sorg. I'm already the wimp. I can't have two of us. It's like the no homers club. <laughs> We're allowed to have one. Homer Glumpnik. Oh jeez, Mike. I want to keep going, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, I, I do have yeah. an early morning. Well, I got to uh, visit our friends. I gotta go scare the crap out of Dave Potter in his office tomorrow. Uh, As once you again, uh, I think. So just start. Just just threaten to burn down his cube. No, I'm not gonna do. No, I'm not gonna do that. They have security and protocols. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. Like, listen, man. It was bad news when I dropped my badge on the way to an office one time. <laughs> Okay. Yes. I was gonna say silly string, but even that sounds a little too. Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. Not messing around. Not okay. messing around. Don't do anything then. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be helping with some uh, live streaming uh, tomorrow. <laughs> so. says balance. I hear him. Balance. I hear him. Yes. He, he understands. Yes. Yeah, um, I can have one wimp on my team, which is me. 
The other one cannot be a wimp. Hey, uh, Cars wants to know what we're all watching on Halloween instead of the Crown Jewel. My vote's on They Live. Me, I'm going to watch The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, as you do. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a conversation that needs to happen between uh, me and the, the fiance. Uh, maybe Hocus Pocus? Yeah, I, that's the thing. Period. It's 1 p.m. in the afternoon for us here on the East oh. Coast. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So I know it's what like, I'm going to be like, watching. As Tina reminds we're all going to be working, guys. None of uh, us are watching it live. I, I mean, um, I guess I could technically put it on here in the studio, or, but... Or I'm probably going to be watching it live. Uh, oh, that's... <laughs> I, yeah, I forgot. I forgot the time zones are different. So yeah, I know what I'll be watching. Like it's his job, Mad Mike. Tomorrow night, like I said, we have scheduled Xander Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and our draft special. Mm-hmm. Our draft special. We will keep all of the windows open so that yes. you can feel a draft. Which podcast? <laughs> <laughs> we will actually have. I was ready for that one. We will actually. <laughs> we will only do the show off of rough notes because they are a draft i was gonna say what are we gonna draft xander to which podcast are we gonna uh a draft xander to on the so- oh we should just have draft the sword John media network <laughs> i still want to see if we can get i've i've been pleading with the war room to get dutters to the mayhem show oh yeah uh-huh. Well, maybe we'll have to get well, maybe we'll have to i do feel that. like we need a hundred percent more porn hub discussions on the mayhem show I, I'm sure They're there's gotta be some figures. Planet, Sorg. I'm sure there's gotta oh, be some figures. By the way, Sorg, Sorg. Before Mike. we go, this is yes. a very brief interaction. Okay. Um, so my fiance, mm-hmm. who is not as well versed in wrestling as you and I are, um, the topic of Ric Flair came up. Mm-hmm. And she asked me a very simple question, to which I did not have an answer. Mm-hmm. She says, "Why is Ric Flair called the Nature Boy?" And I mean, I told her, I'm like, well, he took the name from Buddy Rogers back in like the 70s. But as to why Buddy Rogers was called the Nature Boy, I'm not sure. I've never really looked into the etymology of it. And by the way, by the way, the fact that you use the word etymology in talking about wrestling is I am impressed. Thank you. Um, But then she said something so brilliant. I said, I'm sharing this on the show and I'm giving you full credit. She said, if anyone should be the nature boy, it should be Daniel Bryan. Ooh. And I I just looked at her gobsmacked. I'm like, you are absolutely fucking correct. <laughs> Daniel Bryan, should he need a new gimmick change, should christen himself the as the nature boy Daniel Bryan and come out in a robe made of moss. <laughs> I love it. To me, in my head, he's always been the nature of boy because Ric Flair would just walk around naked, drunk at uh, in hotels a lot. But 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 the, but that's not that's not that has nothing to do with nature. That's just Ric Flair being a drunk asshole. It's just being natural. Natural. I mean, it was you know, hey man, it was the seventies, Mike. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with me. This is, you know what? I felt like shit most of the day. And it wasn't because of Raw. But the healing, the healing nature no, of podcasting. Not. The healing no. nature of podcasting and connecting, sir. Mm-hmm. So. so. All right, that, man. That's going to be your second book after Lorgatron. The Healing the healing Nature of Podcasting <laughs> by Michael Swark. There you go. That was my <laughs> mental health and everything. Uh, yes. I love. Uh, lastly, uh, Alex Cars uh, is hoping Lunchbox gets drafted. Occupy Pro Wrestling. He could use a co-host. Man Mike four eight three on the Twitters. YouTube dot com slash Poppy. And of course, check out everything Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Streaming on so many platforms these days. But of course, a lot of the chats happening on the Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.